there's really no reason for you to leave your house anymore. And I saw that as dangerous. I didn't want to get injured, but I knew that I needed to start moving because if I didn't start moving, it would just get worse and worse. This is the youngest that I'm going to be right now. My motivation was always don't be last. It was never, oh, I want to be first. I want to be the champ. Here, I had trouble with that because I had to get comfortable with being last. Sometimes having a bad experience makes you appreciate when you find a good experience. All right, so tell me about life before you started training with us. Like, what was, you know, what was your fitness like? What did you do? Like, you know, what was your... So I started, what, December 2023? Yeah. Um, I was probably in between gigs. Wait, it must have been 2022. 2022. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's I all started one together. month ago. <laughs> started four it's months been ago. a great Time. 30 days. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. December. Uh, okay, 2022. so December 2022, I was probably in between gigs because I was, I was home a lot. And prior yeah. to that, I had been working from home. The pandemic obviously was towards the tail end. Well, not mm, kind of. The reason that I looked to join a gym, not specifically this gym, this is what I found, which has been a treasure and great. I'm glad <laughs> I found it. Was that I was finding myself being just being at home a lot too much and it would have been really easy to become a hermit especially with delivery services there's really no reason for you to leave your house anymore and i saw that as dangerous i wasn't super happy my fitness wasn't i had gained quite a bit of weight through the pandemic it was bothering my joints and even my back and up until the pandemic, I never felt my age. And I think a big part of that is I don't have a lot of the hallmarks that people my age have. Mortgage, managing a family, husband, kids. Yeah. So I really had a lot of carefree and footloose type of lifestyle <laughs> and, you know, not a lot of ob obligations. So I do help my family out, but not obligations that a lot of folks have. And I believe that kept me young. But that pandemic, I really felt myself eight, just feeling more aged yeah. aging mm -hmm. more was there something that happened like some sort of event where you're like okay it's time i have to do something this is not my first rodeo i have gone through cycles where that happens it started when i was 39 when i was 39 i was like i'm about to be 40 i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. so 39 is when the first time that i sought out a gym and actually specifically i've only always sought out personal trainers because mm -hmm. i didn't feel comfortable being in a group, personal trainer one-on-one. -on -one. It was just me and them. And I was going to the city at the time. So at 5.30, 5.30 to 6, I would meet them. And it was just me and them working out at the gym. No no witnesses. <laughs> and I would get it out of the way early in the in the day. And mm -hmm. I did I did my good thing. I always had nice, good personal trainers. But my whole thinking around exercise was like eating your vegetables, taking your vitamins. It's the right thing to do yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, it's funny. Um, I read a book about this a while back. It's when people turn 29, 39, 49, 59. Is like if you look at the ages of people that like do marathons, like half of them are one of those yeah. four, four or five ages. Yeah. And it's just like there's always this like, oh, oh, gosh, I'm going to be <laughs> in the next decade. I got to do something about that. Mm. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's really good. So it was it was one of those kind of cycles where you were just like, yeah, it's time to do something. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I fell down the stairs or something. I guess. No, and and I was what that was two years ago. I'm forty. That was forty seven, forty six, forty seven yeah. at the mm -hmm. time. So it wasn't a thrush, threshold age or anything. It was really more that I had had success, and my whole thing is, it takes time for me to get into something because. I don't half-ass anything. So if I'm going to commit to something, I know I'm going to see it through. So I really think it to I really want to sign up <laughs> for this. You're careful about what you commit to. Yes, mm -hmm. very careful. Kind I, do, of like, I do remember having that conversation <laughs> with you, actually. Yeah. And you were, you were very, like, thoughtful about it. And I think it took you a, a couple of days for you to... Am I, am I wrong? I thought it took you a couple of days for you to say, like, yes, this is something I want to do. Yes, yes. Yeah. And actually, it's interesting that the intake... Um, interview that you did that was the first time that I've had that at a gym I even felt like am I going to be accepted are they going to accept <laughs> me at this gym oh <laughs> right 
And but I, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and and now that I've been here a little bit over a year, I can see why you do that, and you're selective as to who. It's going to sound bad, but who you invite or who you share the community with, because the community that I have found here has been pretty amazing and unlike any other mm. gym that I've been a member of. Yeah, I mean it's re- it's it's really important because you know, like you said, you were used to just going in, kind of sneaking in. <laughs> you know, trying to sort of be anonymous, working out before anyone gets there. And now we're kind of asking you to be around other people. We got to make sure those other people are kind of cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also other gyms, and depending on if they're a chain versus, you know, a single owner type gym, they're more than happy to take your monthly fee. And like, it's up to you whether you show up or not. Yeah. So um, that. Here it's been very friendly. <laughs> the follow-ups, hey, missed hey, you this so. morning. What's going on? You know, and that, but the, it's been helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. so okay, so you you were like, it's time to do something. You know, you, your previous experience had been kind of doing it on your own. Now we're asking you to come in, be around a bunch of other people. You kind of thought about it for a while. Yeah. What was that first day like? Tell me, describe describe oh, that. Gosh, the first day, I believe. Coming in at like 6.45, 6.30 for a 7 a.m. baseline, mm-hmm. I believe. <laughs> yep. So there was, or maybe it was afterwards. So there was, basically, I was coming in when classes were leaving. And the best first impression that I got was Sarah and Raisa. As soon as I walked in and I was just kind of awkwardly trying to be cool, you know, standing <laughs> by the sofa, be like, yeah, this is what I do. Uh, <laughs> um, they're like, hi, welcome. And I was like, oh. So early, they're like, oh, you're going to love it. Um, You'll get used to it. You'll get addicted. And I was like, okay. And um, that just really put me at ease. Right. Okay. That's Mm. great first impression. We did not pay them to do that. (laughs) But they would totally do that. (laughs) Yeah. That sounds about right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. So you came in and you were working with, was it Katie? With Katie. Yeah. 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 What, what do you remember about that? First yeah. Day? I mean, that's what I remember too. I remember like definitely a sense of, I think like most people when they come here are a little bit tentative. You don't know what to expect. So you walk in, you know, you see all these people, especially you see people leaving and they're like, you know, they're sweating and they're, you know, in their sleeveless shirts or whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, ah, okay. I don't know about this. Like, I'm not so certain. And, um, and so that's what I remember. I remember like, some timidity, but also what's cool about Christina is like, as soon as we started talking, like you are very forthcoming, like you're forthcoming with, um, like I always, I just felt like, okay, I don't, this is not someone who I have to worry about, like pulling stuff out of, like, I feel like this is going to be a relationship that's going to work. Your very own honesty about like, I don't know about this (laughs) was like, was real, but, but then you did it. Um, and just like every single thing, I mean, I remember doing that baseline with you and it was, we just took it like one movement at a time. Um, I even have like your original baseline time, which you have now essentially like halved into, um, but the workout that you did originally since, you know, we retested it and you've taken five minutes off of your time. But, um, but that's why I remember it was just kind of, okay. And, and this has been the way that you've done things, which is, I'm going to take this big thing that is scary and I'm just going to take it one step at a time and I'm only going to worry about the step that's in front of me. I mean, like that was Christina's baseline Mm. and it isn't different now, you know, it's still like, okay, this is a big thing, but I know that if I take that first step, the rest will start to become clear. Yeah. Were you scared that first day? No, because I had had quite a bit of experience in Mm. different fitness environments, so Um, This is the second CrossFit gym that I had joined. So I was familiar with that. Mm. And uh, the nice thing about being 46 or 47, you're just more confident because you've lived a bit more of life. So you're like, oh, yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, It's interesting that you say timidity. I think of it as hesitancy. Mm -hmm. And I do do always have an escape plan in my body. But I'm like, I'm going to try it. (laughs) Uh Okay, just do it one day. And then, like, if it doesn't work out. But I will say the eight-month financial commitment. I was like, no, I, I put this up on, and I owe it to myself. Yeah. Although that came later after my conversations with you, I was like, this is an investment. This is something 
not just like eat your vegetables type of thing, but like this is this is an investment for your future, for my future. So yeah, yeah. yeah. At what point did you start to see a little bit of progress? Like, I, I mean, I, I imagine that first, you know, the first day, first week was was tough. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will say that after the baseline, I felt I felt good because I actually did it, and I hadn't been mm. that intentionally active in a long time. Mm. Uh, so I felt good about that. And I will say um, that was good for my mindset. But it was also like, okay, this is a starting point. And I think we had talked about like, this is data. Mm -hmm. This is just a starting point. And then as far as results, my results have been, uh, there was a lot. I didn't always come in. I was, mm -hmm. my, I was quite inconsistent. So I didn't see results until maybe... At the end of the eight, week, eight weeks, I will say, I guess, mm -hmm. there, yeah. there were some results. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not really, I, you know, I'm not thinking about results. I'm more thinking about, like, when did you start to feel it? And it sounds like you felt some of it on day one. Yes. Yes. And it was really the, gr the group. I was also very hesitant about the small group because I, I don't know if I talked to I've, yeah. probably both of you guys. I'm like, well, you know, I'm looking for a personal trainer. What is this yeah. small group thing? And especially at the price point that it was, I was, I was like, yeah, I'll pay for a personal trainer one on one that will focus just on me. Mm -hmm. But it was really more. I didn't want. Again, I didn't want witnesses. But then you shared that there were studies. There's a lot more success with small groups. And I was like, okay. And again, I'm like, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Mm. And it turns out I really liked it, and the people mm. have been great. And then what was really, really, really nice and what I really appreciate about this gym is the level of diversity. Mm -hmm. And by diversity, I don't mean just skin color, or but like the melange of humanity that you guys <laughs> have here of like different professions, um, different ages, different backgrounds. But, you know, I, for example, have knee issues. And then I, I met. Um, Raisa, who had like shoulder, shoulder issues and yeah. she was working through it. And I was like, oh, OK. So that felt good as well. And it didn't feel like the island of misfit toys because mm. sometimes gyms will do that. We're like, OK, well, you go over there and then the superstars are mm. here. Here it was kind of it was mixed in. It's like, OK, this is where you're at. We'll work with you. Yeah. So that was really appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of highlighting the one on one w versus group. We've been doing this for a long time, and it's so interesting what happens when you have the right group. It's like you see four, five, six people make progress at the same time versus when you do one-on-one, -on -one, it's almost like the opposite. It's like some people are just going to do the thing, but a lot of times what ends up happening is you have this weird like codependency with the coach. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like you have a coach, and... The coach kind of wants to make it work for you. And so the coach kind of adapts to you, uh, it, you know, and so it's like, OK, yeah, I understand. You know, you're busy. You're not feeling good, whatever. And there's no there's no other thing to kind of compare it to. Mm -hmm. I've tried. We've tried so many different ways of doing it. And ultimately, it comes down to what gets the best results. And we have found that, like, even if you and your coach are like are like this and your coach lets you get away with everything there's going to be somebody else in that group that's like doing a little more and then they just bring up the level of that group and it just i find that it I, personally that that made a difference for me mm -hmm. and you know it was kind of the same situation i was you know i came in and i was like oh my back hurts and everything hurts and you know i want to hide in the in the corner, yep. <laughs> you know, and I don't like doing this stuff with group. When I walked in, I mean, I had a different experience. I was intimidated, you know. Someone was doing handstand push-ups the first day I walked in, and I was like, this is not going to work for me. <laughs> 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 and uh, just hanging around people like that, it's like, oh, maybe – Maybe they didn't always do that when they were born, you know? <laughs> Maybe they actually had to learn how to do yeah. this stuff, and yeah. you you could learn how to do it. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you mentioning that. that. My next question was really about the injuries. So you said you had some knee injuries that you're working through. Um, was there anything else? Um, no, it's re – oh, uh, my – I have really tight calf muscles, mm. which I'm learning is all connected. Uh, so I had – I've had um, – muscle tears in my calf muscles and those take forever to get better so that was part of the the hesitancy with exercising as well i didn't want to get 
injured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew that I needed to start moving because if I didn't start moving, it would just get worse and worse. Yeah. This is the youngest that I'm going to be right now. Oh, yeah, that's so. and take that quote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, you know, those injuries have not like they've not uh, they've come up during the time you've been here. It's not that they haven't that they've gone away and they've been gone for good. They've come right. up. Right. Yes. Yeah, so that I will say is another big success of being at the gym. It's brought up. <laughs> It's brought up a lot of pain and it's brought up a lot of my injuries. And I've learned like the mental resiliency and Katie, your whole like, let's be curious, your mm -hmm. whole experimental, let's be curious thing. Mm -hmm. Mindset is very different from my usual mindset. Mm -hmm. I fancy myself quite a, an intelligent person. So I'm like, oh, I've got this figured out. This is the plan that we need to do. And this is going to be the result. I am not so much an experimental curiosity person when it mm. comes to serious things. So that has been very helpful. So it's come up. And I also think that it's a good thing that it's coming up now again when I am at a point in my life where I can do something about it. Mm -hmm. I don't have an ACL. I haven't had an ACL since like college. So 18, 19. And I've lived with it. It's been fine. It hasn't been limiting. But I feel like at 60, it would it's, it would come up again and it would be a bigger mm. a bigger thing. So I'm glad that I'm dealing with it now and I'm learning to that I can exercise with an injury versus, oh, I'm injured. I'm going to be out for a couple of weeks. See you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, I, there's so much good stuff here. I mean, it's funny because I think about people who I've known who will say things like, I'll go to the gym once I'm fit <laughs> or like do or like once oh, once I f solve this problem or this problem, yeah. once I get my knee thing under control or, you know, once I lose a little bit of weight, <laughs> you know, like all comes up. And, um, and that's something that I've appreciated about you is that you are willing to step in as you are. That's been a change. It's mm -hmm. kind of like cleaning your house before your cleaning person comes over, which <laughs> you t people tend to do that, right? And it's like, oh. That wasn't always the case with me. I kind of lost my train, train of talk. Oh, yes. It's been messy. It's been messy here. And usually I am very, like, my public figure and all that is very important to me. So, for example, I grew up playing sports. And whenever we did the conditioning, we did bleachers and stairs, which... Back in the day, I'm like, oh, I should have really appreciated <laughs> all my physicality <laughs> and running, like running with the track guys or whatever. My goal was never to be number. I even did cross country, mm. fourth grade, but still mm. I did it. My motivation was always don't be last. It was never, oh, I want to be first. I want to mm. be the champ. It was mm. like at least one person mm. <laughs> to be at least in front of that one last person. Mm. So that was my thing here. Mm. I had trouble with that because I had to get comfortable with being last. I had to get comfortable with, ah, there are limitations. Um, so, and that's what led to the inconsistency where I wouldn't come in because I didn't want to face that. I didn't want to face like, oh, I used to be able to do this. Christina, you've always been physical. You've always been athletic. It's like facing your mortality. Mm. And I don't like not succeeding. Mm. So this was a place of, Faili not failure. Oh, that's such a harsh word. Mm. Unsuccess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So mentally and emotionally that took. Yeah. A like bit. a place of exposure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Totally. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that uh, I look for when people start here is it really doesn't matter where you start. I mean, you could have not worked out for 20 years or you could be like a college athlete. Right. And, you know, coming right off of your season, that first workout or that first something that you do that kicks your butt, like, how do you react to that? And that's that's the thing that I always look for. And what I what I've learned is that your reaction to that usually determines how successful you'll be long term. Mm -hmm. It's like if the first time something happens, it's not always the case. Sometimes it takes five times for this to happen. But if, this, if the first time you get your butt kicked, you run or you know you're you you have a big ego about it then generally that's the way that you react <laughs> you know if you're like okay that sucked i'm going to come back again tomorrow then that's generally the way you react and it's so interesting you talk about finishing last it's like i still i still finish last on workouts mm -hmm. you know it's it's it it happens 
you know, you'll, you'll be trying something new that you struggle with, or you're going a heavier weight than maybe you're comfortable with. Or you just and, work out against me, you know, then uh, much uh, Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is that, yeah. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, but like, you know, you, I, I finished last and it's like, I have those feelings that come up just like you described. And I just have to remind myself, well, you know, I can finish last every day for the next three weeks and eventually I will be strong enough and fast enough to finish second to last. And then third to last is actually better than finishing first. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the thing that I've really appreciated about you is I, the biggest change I've seen since you started really is all around your, your kind of approach, just like you, just like you described is like, I can see just the, the confidence that you have and you know, all, all of the, the ways you approach, just the way you walk into the, to the gym, you just, you're just much more energetic than you were at the beginning when you were kind of wrestling with like, Oh, what, did, what is today going to be like? You know, now it's just like, yeah, whatever I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I had to, so I guess my first, I really had to wrestle with my ego. You brought up ego. That's been the biggest thing of you have a sort, a sort of, I, um, phys- uh, a picture of yourself and who you are and how you project yourself to the world and especially to like a room full of strangers, whether they're fit or not, it's just in general. So that was a big struggle. Um, and Katie, you helped me with that and it humbled me, but it, it's not like, oh, you, it's not the army where you're like, you broke me down and you're going to build me back up. No, because that would not work for me. I'd be like, oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> but that and, and, and you, Jay, during the nutrition uh, podcast things that we had yep. celebrating the mini victories, mm. the little milestones that has really helped. Yeah. Um, but it did take quite a few months for me to get to that point. Yeah. And now I'm in it. You guys are stuck with me. I'm committed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, so I'm really curious, like what are some of the biggest results you've seen kind of inside and outside of the gym over the last kind of year, year and a half since you've been here? I do feel that my cardio has gotten better. Mm -hmm. Um, I do feel much more comfortable in my skin and in my body. And that is huge because that's that's been a lifelong journey. Uh, Nutrition. So my relationship with food and which I had worked on. Again, I had had successes, but they they had been episodic with depending off if I was doing Zumba or I even tried a that thing where like people lift weights but then they get oiled up to like look all good <laughs> bodybuilding there you go bodybuilding <laughs> <laughs> yes it was like a bodybuilding oh, gym yeah. <laughs> um yeah. which was really good like yeah. that was the first time so i had had quite i had done quite a bit of work before i landed here um but that was the first time where they're like they were very visual so every mm, week right. it would take a picture front right, right. back and sides and talk about your ego you're like oh I never see myself from the back um but again my personal trainer was this great woman that I um had a good relationship with and there was like a nutrition thing that went with it and it's my first time that I started weighing my food and having you know keeping track of macros and all that um so I because I had that success and I was kind of familiar with it when I came in and you guys started talking about it I was like oh okay but then you guys brought in what I really appreciate about Hail and you guys, you guys bring in a ton of like research and studies and but but in a in a human way, mm. not like here's the research, you know, it says that if you do mm. X, Y, Z, you're going to get this result. Mm-hmm. You know, you also bring in the humanity of it all and the, the, the mentality and the psychology, which I think that is the biggest sort of result that I've had at this place. My numbers are not where I would want them to be yet, but. I feel much better and I am much happier and much more confident. And that just radiates to the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've changed jobs as well since you started here, right? (laughs) Not by choice, I guess. Uh, Yes. And actually being that I was that I'm in ER, sometimes a layoff is a godsend. Mm. I was at a company where the environment and the culture was just not that great, but it's like, Oh my God, it's so amazing. It looks so good on your resume. One of those places, right? Layoff came around. I was bummed, but 
it gave me more time to do stuff here. Yeah. And then sometimes having a bad experience makes you appreciate when you find a good experience. Yeah. So I did, I was able to find in like four months, I think I was able to find the job where I'm at now Yeah. and much happier. Yeah. 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 What results have you seen coach? Well, it's, you know, you asked Christina, like, what is some of the progress that you've seen? And you've alluded to some of like, you know, when I think about when Christina first arrived, one of the things that we worked on was around facing uncomfortable situations in the gym. And, you know, yeah, finishing last or having to do something a little different than what the rest of the group was doing, you know, whether it was around the knee or just certain movement restrictions. And, um, And I remember this impacting you in a way where you would then not come into the gym the next day or for the rest of the week. And we work through it. And so one of the things that we talked about was like shortening the period of time between like when the event takes place that makes you feel a kind of way and when you take that next step. And like, and when we started, it was like we had, you know, it would be a week or a week and a half or so between like, okay, I'm feeling bad. I kind of go through this episode. I get myself back to a place of feeling better and I return. And over time, gradually, that just started to shorten Mm -hmm. where suddenly it became like, oh yeah, that thing happened. Okay, things happen. I'm going to show up tomorrow. I'm going to show up Wednesday. And what happened was once that started happening often enough, your mo- the way you moved changed. And I remember it was probably six months ago, maybe eight months ago now, feeling like, oh my gosh, when Christina's working out now, she's just moving differently. And what it looked like to me was like, she's owning these movements. You know, it's like, okay, squat to a bench, I got that. Okay, do my sit-ups on the bench, my little twists, got that. And it became so much, you could just tell that she was in her own world and less focused on the things that were happening around her. And then it became like, whether I finished first or last doesn't matter, like I'm doing my workout. Yeah. And, um, and, and it just like, it gave me chills when I started to see that because it to me represented this whole process of, facing the uncomfortable thing again and again and again until that just becomes the thing that you actually desire, (laughs) you know, to like get into that space and then prove that you can overcome it. And that's the space that I see you in now. It's like, you know, I have on here, like one of the wishes that you had was feeling confident, finding a job, engaging in more positive self-talk. Like that was one of the, like those were three of the goals that we set early on. And just to kind of like be like, oh, check, check, check. Crush those. You know, like... (laughs) Um, in the language that you use around yourself is completely changed. It has gone from a place of comparison, which was always around the thing that I used to be able to do, the way I used to feel, the fact that I feel old now, to like owning the space that you're in right now and recognizing that like there's a way forward from here. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that I would say like that is what I've noticed as some of the biggest, the biggest change. And I think like one of the biggest things that I'm, proud of for you. Yeah. I remember a conversation where you said something like, you know, oh, you were like apologetic. Like, I'm sorry. I must, you know, I must be a hard person to coach. Like you've been so patient, right? Because, you know, I, I say I'm going to do the thing and then it takes me a little bit. And I remember in that moment being like, this is an honor for me because so many people who are in your shoes at this point would have just been gone, yep. right? Like, and it is something that I think like so many people could take something from is like your resilience and your willingness to just return time and time again. And it's not always on my timeline. It's not always on your timeline. It's on your timeline, but you never stop coming. Like you never stop showing up. Anyway, I could do it on you all day long, but <laughs> those are, yeah, you asked some changes and those are, those are some of the biggest ones that I've noticed. Yeah, that's amazing. What other questions do you have, coach? So one of the things that I thought was interesting working with you is the way that like, we'll just take food as an example, how you approach food has changed a little bit. And this is something that I notice for a lot of times when people come in is they have this idea of, I'm going to find this one solution that's going to work for me. And then I'm going to, it's going to be my ride or die. Like I'm riding it for life. 
And, um, and when it's, if it stops working, then all I need to do is like get back on that thing again and keep going. And, um, so my question, I guess, is like, tell me a little bit about how your thinking around your own food and diet and body has evolved. Yes. So that very much is the way that, I, that the many times that I've joined gyms or worked with personal trainers is like, I'm, I'm going to get on this routine. I, there's that accountability. I put money down. There's that person that I need to show up for. Should be me, but it's usually not. There's a coach waiting for me at 5.30 a.m. Yeah. And the food thing as well. Like, oh, I need to follow. I've never really dieted. I like food too much. And I always thought as long as I run or I work out, I can eat whatever I want. But then I've, I've learned that that's it. Both of those things work together. So, yes, I, I, I did think that. I was like, okay. But, but I also know myself. And as soon as you – like, I crave structure. I like structure. But as soon as you give me structure, I start like, oh, my gosh, this is so restrictive. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this and that, and I'll make it up later. You know, I start bargaining with myself. Now, um, now, and I've never, knock on wood, felt I, I would do binge drinking. Binge drinking. Oh, wow. Well, we could talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Binge <laughs> eating. <laughs> As I'm like, oh, the Patron. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, um, and I would use it as a way to deal with my feelings and my emotions and things that, but, but, and again, before I got here, I had had breakthroughs where like, hey, eating, all of this actually doesn't make me feel better. Mm. And I was able to break that, but I would have relapses now and then. Here, working with you, it's been gr- It's not that you've given me permission, because I didn't ask for it and you wouldn't be that way, but it's the, the flexibility, mm. I guess, of like, let's, and again, it goes back to the curiosity and the experimentation. Mm. Let's see what happens if you try this for a week or two. And then the tracking, right? Yeah. Like I've done tracking where it's a spreadsheet and I get into the minutia and it, and then that's not sustainable. Mm. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't stick. So you gave me different strategies and different tools and different options, which was kind of nice. And again, just the way that you are, I felt like I could be vulnerable and I could really be open with you Mm. on things. And then you also shared your experience. That's been honestly a godsend. Mm -hmm. Um, in this whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think that has stood out to me too, is like your willingness to experiment with different things versus like when you came in and it was like, okay, I'm going to be perfect from day one. Mm. (laughs) And it was like, actually, great. We can be perfect for a period of time, but in the long run, what we're looking for is something that we can sustain through time so we can continue to see progress. And you've been open to like, all right, well, I clearly don't know the way. So let me try this thing, yeah. this thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's and really good. there's been a lot of unlearning, a lot of, and even now when I talk to my family and I tell them what I'm doing, they're very much old school, like, oh, how much, how many pounds have you lost? Mm-hmm. Or like, oh, today I'm not that hungry. That's great. Mm-hmm. You know, just that, that would be great if you could keep just eating salads. Mm-hmm. And I know that it comes from a good place thing goodness, I've done therapy Mm -hmm. and I don't take it personally. It's just their point of view and their background and how women are seen and, you know, what's valued in the Latino community is very much visual Mm -hmm. and like you need to be, and I guess women in general. So, and I tried to, you know, explain and they're like, oh, well, that's great. But again, a lot of my life is so different from the rest of my family that they're like, Sure, Christine. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, really, the the most important question: If there's somebody out there like you, maybe in November of 2023, mm. who is or 2022, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so 18 months ago, right? You know, and they're and they're sort of in the position you were in, feeling like you were feeling what, like, what advice would you kind of give them? I would say definitely schedule that clarity call. (laughs) We'll get back to you pretty quickly. And come in and give it a try. There's nothing bad that can come out of it. And um, there's nothing bad that can come out of it. You've got nothing to lose and Mm. so much to gain. Friendly, great. But also, because there's some places, for example, this is probably going to sound, again, I self-censor myself. (laughs) I never tried curves Mm -hmm. because curves has a certain way that it, the image that it puts through. And I'm like, ah, that's not what I really want. Mm. But you know what? If it works for folks, perfect. Great. Mm -hmm. So what was the 
point about bringing up curves. Mm. And, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, don't be intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not curves, definitely. Mm -hmm. CrossFit has been, again, people are like, there's guys that I know that do CrossFit and there's always the joke of like, do you even lift bro and all <laughs> yeah. this and all mm -hmm. that. And they're like, oh, it's like a cult. And it's not, it's not like a cult, but the community is amazing. Mm -hmm. No matter, oh, that's what I want. No matter what level you are, there are people that are like at the, I don't know what you call them, the professional top level, which are amazing. But then I've realized that they themselves are, have goals mm -hmm. that like they want to get to. Like they're deadlifting 300, is that a thing? They're deadlifting 300 pounds. Maybe they want to deadlift 350 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm at like 100. Mm -hmm. But like. I think you're more than that. Well. Yeah, 155, 155, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You started at uh, 85, so there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's all about a progress in your, and running your own race. And it's just a lot of fun. Mm. And, you know, exercise just makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. So, like, mentally, emotionally, and physically, this has been, like, a really good experience mm -hmm. for me. Did you ever think you'd be at a place like this, what, 18 months later? 18 <laughs> months later? No. For sure. <laughs> I thought, I'm in for eight weeks. Yeah. Let's see what happens, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think so. And it, it is because I feel good when I when I come in. And it, cha and it challenges me, too. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And again, my whole like kind of like you know when you're jumping rope, I'm very much that person's like, okay, that's Waiting. not the right time. That's not the right time. Hold on, hold on. Okay, you know. But once I jump in, I'm like jumping and like feel really good yeah. about. It. So it takes me a while to get started, but once I'm in, I'm committed. I'm in it, and I have a good time because I'm also not a person that's going to do something that's not fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's really good. What's What's next for you? Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, I, just to, just to that point. To that point, one thing that's really cool is be, is that like you, you have embraced the community so wholeheartedly that you have become that Sarah, that Rasa, who that beep beep, that client, whatever <laughs> starts with the names. You have become that person who greets the person at the door yeah. now. Like you are that person now. Um, and I see you. I was just I was just relaying this story to Jay the other day. You know, we were bench pressing and you're there behind Malika spotting her and it's like, you know, you're sharing support like, okay, remember, like, reset, breathe, you've got this. And it's just like you are that person now who is, like, so encouraging and so supportive and, that like, everyone wants to be there, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everyone wants you to be there for that reason. Yeah. So... And that's the person that I am outside of the gym. I'm all about inclusivity. Mm -hmm. And I, if I see you and you're like on your own, I'll go up and talk to you and bring you in and like respect your boundaries if you don't want to <laughs> join in, right? But the fact that I'm that doing that here and I'm I'm that person here, that's I'm very surprised about that. Yeah, so. that's pretty cool. All right, so last question: What is next for you? You know, we all we all have sort of goals and things that we want to achieve. What are your current so, goals? So when was this? Again, it might have been at one of our nutrition chats. Jay, you said, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be like? Or who do you look up to that you want to reach as far as one of our members when you first started? And when I first started, I wasn't. I, I, I think I said I just wanted I just wanted to feel better. But now I have a person. I've gotten to know Shoshana. And she's amazing. And it's nice to see someone, you know, in my same group as far as women and a uh, woman and age and all that stuff and like what she's able to do. And it's in a positive, healthy way versus like, oh, Shoshana, like yeah, I yeah. totally want to be, you know, <laughs> you know, it's more like, okay. And um, I can see what's possible and, and not so much to her exact movements or anything like that, but like to get to a point where, you know, a bit further than where I am now. So that's yeah. pretty much yeah. what I'm thinking. That's great. I, I, I really love that. I mean, Shoshana has been around for what, six years, something like that. And, you know, she very much had a similar sort of like attitude when she came in. It's like, OK, I'm just going to show up <laughs> and do what I can do. Yeah. And if I can't do it, then I can't do it. But I'll just do what I can. Yeah. And it's been in the last sort of 18 months where she's coming up to me, you know, once a week, once a month, she's like, oh, I did this thing that I haven't been able to do for, for years. And, you know, you're right. Just keep showing up. And yeah, it's like, you know, I think there is, there's a lot of value in comparison. 
depending on who you compare yourself to. Correct. And yeah. how you compare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So I love that. Christina, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Any last words? No, just uh, this is great. Thank you. And um, I look I, I really hope that people will at least give it a try. It really is worth it. And if it's not for, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But it's 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 good to be curious mm-hmm. and experimental mm-hmm. when it comes to fitness. Yeah, and yeah, else. that's really mm-hmm. cool. I love <laughs> that. I love that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Okay. Look, look forward to what the next yeah. three, five, ten years looks yeah. like. For Actually, you, so. oh my gosh. So one thing that I will tell both of you guys, this is my second open. Mm. Yeah. first open didn't really pay attention mm-hmm. I don't even remember what team I was on <laughs> um, mm. this time I just I guess because I had the, the experience I'm like oh, okay it's not as scary as it sounds and it's not what is that other CrossFit competition the strongest woman on earth like that really tall yeah, the CrossFit games. lady there yeah. you go yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like there's no way I'm doing that <laughs> so the open is a little bit different um, so second year I was like okay I've seen it I think I can do it and then the teams, you guys did a really great job mm-hmm. of like the, the the structure and all that. And I am looking forward, and I'm actually logging in Sherwood, logging in CrossFit. <laughs> I'm actually paying attention. I'm supportive of my teammates. Mm-hmm. I love the team spirit too. Yeah. I'm a great trash oh, yeah. talker. And, you know, like, <laughs> and I'm also very quick, like, what did you say about us? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's <laughs> okay, amazing. like I'm like, oh, I wonder how my numbers will be next year. Okay, so that and it that's <sighs> yeah, it's awesome, but it's also really weird. Mm. Yeah, I love that. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. All right, Christina. Well, that's all we've got. Thank yeah. you okay. all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, we've got plenty of others. Go check out this one over here.